In this episode, we're going to look at the Mighty Conqueror, a super heavy design from the 50s. Now, the Conqueror saw service from around about 1955 to 1966. And the reason the Conqueror came about or evolved was as a direct response to the IS-3. The British War Office saw a need for a tank to actually cope with the new Russian armour and therefore they deemed that something like a minimum of 120 millimetres was needed for this. The Conqueror has a crew of four, an armour of 130 millimetres and weighs a mighty 65 tonnes. And it was the heaviest tank ever to serve with the British Army. OK, next down I have a look at the front of the mighty Conqueror. The first thing that's very apparent are the two very large headlights. Directly beneath the headlights, you can see the registration plate and directly beneath the registration plate, the towing eye. Moving back on top, it's very clutter-free on the front of the Conqueror. We've got two fire extinguishers, one left and right. And finally, you can see just to the right of the turret, we have the driver's cab. And the driver's cab is surrounded by a number of vision blocks or periscopes. The main armament on the Conqueror is incredibly simple by design. Designed by the Americans, very, very streamlined, and you'll notice that midway down you've also got a rather large fume extractor. Going up in the turret, we have an incredibly strengthened and armoured bellows, or gun trunnions, and then we go onto the rear of the absolutely monstrous turret. An incredible design feature about the Conqueror was the fact that the turret alone weighed 18 and a half tonnes. And one of the main design features was the very large commander's cupola, which the commander could actually rotate. The Conqueror's turret was very simple but very functional by design and really clutter free. A couple of the main things to point out are obviously the hatches. You've got two hatches to the front of the commander's hatch, left and right, and notice the sheer size of the rotational commander's hatch. I'll also point out the armoured hood for the gunner sight, and also you can see quite clearly the machine gun. You'll also notice that to the left and the right of the turret there are also two banks of multi-barreled smoke grenade discharges and the means for firing these were located inside the turret. Two antenna bases for the radios and then you cannot help but notice the monstrous commander's cupola that we've got on here. As I said before, it was rotational which was quite a good design feature at the time and also a huge thing, key thing about Conqueror was the fact that the commander also had a range finder which enabled him to identify and find the range of another target whilst the gunner was dealing with the previous one. We're now on the back decks and unfortunately we can't access the transmission but it does give you a good idea of the sheer size and scale of it. The engine was a fuel injected version of the Meteor engine driving through a regular Merritt Brown transmission. You can see the fuel filler caps located to the left and right. The suspension on the Conqueror employed the Horseman type suspension system. This actually involved having eight row wheels either side. And you notice very distinctive row wheels and the sheer fact that they are steel rimmed. Although it's made them quite resilient and hard wearing, it also meant it was incredibly noisy. Here we are then in the commander station of the Conqueror. And the first thing is very apparent is obviously A, the room, the angle I'm sat in at the moment, but the fact that the commander station is completely cut off from the other crew members. There's no ability for the commander to get across to the other stations. Some of the key things that we've got in the commander station. Just to the left there, there was the ability to operate, i.e. elevate and depress, the machine gun, the roof-mounted machine gun. And obviously, again, the good old Bakelite firing switches. Located directly in front of the commander was the commander's sight. Again, a binocular-type sight. And also, just to the left of that, is also an ancillary sight. Across to the right-hand side, we've got a duplex controller. Very, very simple to use, left for left and right for right. And really the final thing to mention about the commander station was there was a gun position indicator just to the right of where the commander would sit. 